and I'm getting mixed messages, so can I just clear up a couple of points? I think it was at the last meeting that Dr. Oldfield told us, uh, I'll try and remember what he actually said accurately, I think he said that uh, when he has looked at AME in Charing Cross, the people that got through the triage were people who needed to be there. They were not people who could have been treated somewhere else. They needed to be there. He also agreed um, that the department is currently understaffed and very, very hard-working. And that's my personal experience as well. Now, finally, the final point that he made was that an A&E does need beds. That you know, beds in wards when people have gone through the process of being seen in A&E, they need to be sent off to whichever department. I don't see how any of that squares with changing it into something less than a full A&E department, um, reducing the number of consultants there, and certainly I don't see how that squares with reducing the number of beds. Now, those are the issues which my members keep asking, and frankly, we're not getting any answers that are in any sense helpful. Can we please try and get something that will be understood by the older residents of, of the borough, and indeed the younger ones, but particularly I'm concerned about the, uh, the older people, who want to know very simply what is going to be the offer when you know, the whole thing's settled. So um, there will always need to be A and E's. There will always need to be beds. We will always be wanting A and E consultants. The actual proportion of them and how we arrange them to get the best services is one of the things we're trying to do by having less A and E's, but having uh, more senior consultants in the staff, so that we can have senior consultants there for most of the hours of the day to actually meet the needs of the people very early in their pathway. There is good evidence that if you see a senior consultant early in an A&E pathway, it improves decision making, it reduces investigations, it makes it more likely that you can go home rather than be admitted. So that is one of the reasons we're making the changes. The, actual, the, the other issue is that although it is true that we need hospitals, beds and consultants, that it's one of the things that we have been wrestling with, with our colleagues in Imperial, is there are some people in hospital beds who are actually medically fit. Now the percentage of those, uh, luckily because we've been working very hard, is going down, but I want there to be enough beds for everybody that needs a bed, but I also want everybody who doesn't need to be in a hospital to be where their best care is given to them. And so the actual changes in numbers that we're suggesting within Shaping Equity of Future in terms of bed base is less than the overall numbers that we believe are in currently occupying acute beds but need them to be in them because they care would be better elsewhere, either in their own homes or in other facilities. Okay. Um, just